Jamie, uh, I guess you're a bit like me. You find it hard to express feelings without a beat or melody. <laughs> so I thought I'd write you a little poem. One about love, friendship, and inevitable growing. Given how much cheesiness there's already been, what's the issue with a little bit more from me? Um, but before this really begins, I do want to thank the, um, the Coopers and the Colvins. Without your support, this would have been a hard feat. I hear living in Richmond, one can struggle to make ends meet. <laughs> so here's the story about the time since we first met. All the laughs, the trials, and a few things we regret. We very first met at the tender age of 13. Um, I had spots, a dodgy haircut, whilst you stood there tall and lean. Damn, I thought quietly to myself. I haven't got a chance with the girls in our year. Look at that guy's rosy cheeks and dimples. Oh wait, is that Disney out here? <laughs> I mean, sure, the guy can sing. But maybe there is hope for the rest of us. All he says to girls is how he just can't wait to be. Being as good looking as you are has always got you into a bit of trouble. No, not that time at Gay Pride. <laughs> Nor when you, when you dress as Snow White and ask the waiter for a cuddle. You, are, you must remember driving to Wales in your own little bubble. Give it, gazing at yourself in the rear view mirror and driving straight into the rubble. If truth be told, you've had more than a few special occasions. No, not those that you celebrate with your Loughborough friends after writing a few equations. I mean, who knew a game of hangman could take so long? Who is one letter off for an hour, yet still got it wrong? <laughs> I realise this is starting to sound like a rap verse, and I really don't mean to lower the tone. But you already did that once before when you asked Cuthy B to take the microphone. <laughs> But seriously, growing up with you is something I'll truly never forget. Kiteboarding and wakeboarding would have been rubbish on my own, as there would have been no way of knowing that was obviously the best. <laughs> <laughs> but before this whole speech really starts overrunning, I'd like to raise a toast to the bridesmaids. You look absolutely stunning. <laughs> Particularly one of you. <clears throat> My number starts with 077. The rest you can find under your seats. I'll be in room 111. All, all jokes aside, Megan, this is also for you. You've lit up Jamie's life, and I couldn't be happier too. Dressed as a princess was the first time we met. And today is a day that none of us will ever forget. You've always been both stunning and clever. And today, you look more beautiful than ever. When you got engaged, Jamie wrote you an eight-minute song. That's true love, and the only time you lasted that long. Um, Jamie and Megan, I'm delighted to say you are now husband and wife. I can't wait to see you grow as a couple in your exciting new life. But this doesn't mean that we all drift apart. Jamie will be closer than ever, just like it was from the start. If everyone would like to please stand and raise a toast to this amazing couple. Um, to a couple that haven't been able to keep their eyes off each other since they first met to a couple that couldn't be more suited to each other if they tried, and to a couple that means so much to each and every one of us in this room tonight. We wish you all the best with your exciting new life. Yeah. To Jamie and Megan. I hope you've enjoyed the food and drink so far. Um, we're gonna have a little break in the dinner proceedings for everyone else's favorite part of the day. 
uh, the part that I've been dreading, the speeches. Um, I've, I've, I've chosen to go first to uh, just get it over and done with. 50 years ago, on this exact day, and pretty much at this exact time, history was made. When Neil Armstrong became the first man to land on the moon. <laughs> he said those famous words, it's one small step for man and one giant leap for mankind. Well today, ladies and gentlemen, it's one small step for Jamie, one giant leap for all those guys punching well above their weight. <laughs> when, Megan when Megan told me that I had to write my own vows as well as a speech and a song, I thought it was quite a lot to ask from a dyslexic. <laughs> but I thought, if I give it my best shot, she wouldn't get angry when I told her I bought a brand new drone for my wedding day. <laughs> I'm incredibly lucky to be married, oh, now married to Megan, but I'm also... <laughs> But I'm also incredibly lucky to be married into one of the lovely, two of the loveliest families I've ever met. The Nelsons and Coopers have welcomed me in with open arms, provided many laughs, taught me many, taught me a few northern phrases, and plenty of rude jokes. Isn't that right, Gramps? Your, your families are enormous, but the bond that you all share is extraordinary. The bar set by Gran and Gramps, Grandpa and, Gram and Grandma Cooper is inspirational to me and the family, hope to, and the family we hope to create. Not yet, not yet. John, or should I say father-in-law. I see so much of Megan in you. Her work ethic, the fact that she can't sit down for more than five minutes, and her drive to be successful. I wish you'd only passed on her ex exceptional driving and directional skills because <laughs> Megan has none. Thank you for trusting me with your daughter. Seeing you walk down the aisle was by far the best moment of my life, and I'm grateful for yours and Jackie's support making today possible. Thank you. Thank you. Alex. You're the most loving, supportive, and caring mum to Hannah and Megan. I love you for so many reasons. Your apple crumble, <laughs> your weekly FaceTime chats, for teaching me how to sail, and for raising the woman of my dreams. Thank you for everything you and John have done for us, and, uh, for us today and always. <laughs> and, it, and I'm also em I'm the envy of many blokes out there, because not only is my wife gorgeous, my mother-in-law is super hot as well. <laughs> to my brother Ash, to my brother Ash, you have been the best friend whilst growing up and we have done so many things together. I love you so much and extremely excited for, for you too. So good luck and I'm sure you're gonna be an amazing dad. So, to my mum and dad, thank you doesn't feel like enough for these two. If YouTube was around in the 70s, my dad would be a worldwide phenomenon. <laughs> if, you ha if you haven't seen my dad's filming skills, I highly recommend you head over to his channel. He's just about mastered the art of vlogging, which means when you talk to the camera for all of those who are aged over 50. My dad has captured my entire life on camera, literally. Whilst my poor mum was busy pushing me into the world, Dad was there, lens down the business end, filming every moment. I often like to, sh I often like to show Megan my videos of me growing up, but she certainly wasn't prepared for that one. What can I say about my mum? She has two sons over six foot and collectively weigh 220 kilograms. So she, it's safe to say she fed us well. Every weekend, Dad, every weekend with Dad, 
She would drive to Uppingham School, watch us play rugby and cheer from the sidelines. I, I think, I think mums are underappreciated in general, but living with three Colvin men who aren't that great at expressing their emotions, my mum has probably felt a bit underappreciated at times over the past 30 years. Well, mum, I love you very much, and I think I can speak on behalf of all of us when we say that we would be completely lost without you. Nothing gets past my mum. Nothing. Megan was in a play at university once which involved her kissing a few men and flashing her knickers. She didn't, she didn't tell my parents for obvious reasons, but mum was scrolling through Facebook one day and found Megan tagged in a post advertising the tickets to a new and exciting play. She went ahead and bought tickets for my dad, um, front row seats to see Megan's naughty performance. I'm pleased to say the cast and crew are here tonight at the back. <laughs> Obviously, Megan was mortified, but it didn't bother my uh, didn't deter my dad from jumping into the aisle and recording the whole thing. <laughs> Joking aside, my parents are truly incredible. What they have built these past 40 years is just unbelievable, and I am incredibly pr proud to be your to be your son. <laughs> Let's move on to my wonderful wife, Megan. I'd like to say that eight years ago, a lovely ray of sunshine entered my life, but it was more like a Category 5 hurricane. <laughs> she swept me up, and it, and it has been the most amazing and, uns and surreal eight years. I have to pinch myself to realise that this woman next to me is actually with me, let alone now married to me, and we have a fantastic life together. You've all heard the story of how we met. It was pretty much love at first sight. Then she opened her mouth. I realised she was northern. I second guessed myself and thought, ah, nobody's perfect. <laughs> Loughborough, where we met, wasn't the biggest university, so word travelled fast when the most beautiful girl on campus had been snapped up. I arrived at hockey training one evening and the, the team was stretching on the floor. As I approached, they started to get up one by one and gave me a standing ovation with rap rapturous applause for the guy who got the girl. <laughs> Megan and I spent many nights out in the student union at university. I've never told her this, but I knew deep down she was the one early on when she ran onto the dance floor one evening screaming, Jamie, come on, McFly are playing. <laughs> the early years of a relationship, of a relationship, can often be a challenge, and I was suffering in silence for the first four of ours. I didn't want to lower the tone tonight, but poor Megan has had to put up with this for a long time, and I think it's only fair to talk about it. I suffer from something called gaseous bottomendius. <laughs> For those of you who suffer the same fate, you know how uncomfortable it is to hold in a trump. <laughs> Megan's a lady, so nothing, she doesn't do that. <laughs> in, in the early years of our relationship, I was afraid to sneak one out, so I would go to great lengths to conceal what I had been brewing. <laughs> like in our final year, Megan lived just down the road from me, and I used to make excuses to run home, have a tactical, tactical toilet trip, and then returned to Megan as if nothing had happened. <laughs> they say you truly know someone, you don't know someone until you've lived with them. Well, Megan, saying, that saying runs true, and I'm so grateful that you haven't left me. Yet. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to try and find a segue from Trump's to saying something nice about Megan, but I'll just drive straight in. <laughs> Believe me when I say, we wouldn't be here today if it weren't for this incredible woman. When Megan moved to London, and I was still in Loughborough and then Norfolk, she would jump in her little red car every weekend and drive those three hours to see me whilst working incredibly hard at her job. Her personality and smile literally lights up the room when she walks into them, 
and being around someone with that enthusiasm for life is infectious. I have a lot to thank for my wife for. Thank you for believing me, even when I, didn't, I don't believe in myself. Thank you for giving me the confidence to chase my dreams and thank you for teaching me what love is. No one will truly know how special a person you really are and how big your heart is because I'm, I'm the lucky one who gets to be by your side with the, and the, the points where no one else can see you. The imperfections, sometimes messy, northern lass who would rather spend a weekend up on the farm than do anything glamorous. <laughs> I get to see the girl who cries at absolutely everything on TV, the girl who worries about everyone around her, and the girl who can't get to the end of our road without using a sat-nav. <laughs> Megan, thank you for taking a chance on a pretty shy, awkward, geeky boy and turning him into a marginally less shy, awkward, geeky man. You are often the leading la lady on stage. You are certainly the leading lady in my life. And my, my goodness, you stole the show today. I still, I, I still haven't worked out quite, quite why Megan agreed to marry me, but every day I wake up happy that she chose me, and I'm really looking forward to the rest of our lives next to this amazing woman. I love you in so many ways and for so many reasons, so I would like you all to join me in the toast to my best friend, my beautiful wife, Megan. Um, so back when we all met at the fickle age of 13, you maybe would have thought that Jamie would be a little like the rest of us, i.e. slightly awkward and uh, just, just, just awkward, right? <laughs> but no, not this man. Um, Jamie, well, it, it maybe comes down to the Dutch genes, I, I'm, I'm not sure, well done, Divi. But um, he, was a, he was a very, very, very beautiful, I mean, he, he was pushing six foot at the age of 13, right? He was hunky, he was athletic and he was decked head to toe in Abercrombie and Fitch. Um, so it came as no surprise that the ladies were interested from day one. Uh, I think a lot of the elder ladies would even admit to having their heads turned. Um, so it was all looking good for Jamie, but only for a very short period. Um, it, it soon became clear to us and, and the majority of the girls at school that he had a very cute but slightly disturbing Disney obsession. Um, and actually, fortunately for us, his uh, pretty much 99% of your conversations with, with the opposite sex were, were based around, I think it was McFly or High School, high school Musical, yeah. um, Busted or whatever, anything Disney it was, it was to do. Um, and I think, to be honest, you, you, you will admit openly now that you're yet to grow out of any of those things. <laughs> but, but back to Jamie. The point is, don't let those rosy cheeks and, and delicious dimples fool you for one second. Um, here is a man at the tender age of 15 uh, decided to jump out of his school window after hours, having boldly decided to, uh, to basically say, I will get the booze for the Christmas summer the night, the following evening. Um, so off he went, right? The rest of us e we were eagerly awaiting his return. Um, now, Colvin's one of those people, he knows when he has a plan, right? So Colvin, off he went into the darkness. He knew the exact route to take, right? The cameras were here by the neighbouring mouse block. If he had his hoodie on with his black, black hood up, right? Fine, just off I go. <sighs> it's very easy. I can, I can do this. I can do this. Um, so 20 minutes later, he returned and he had the goods, so we all thought, this is fantastic. But there is always a slight flaw to Jamie's beautifully planned, planned strategies. Anyway, so when, when Jamie came back into, into the room, he, he took his hoodie off. You have Corvin written all the way over your black hoodie that was supposed to keep you hidden. So, I mean, stealthy Colvin that was supposedly undetected that came back, I mean, it just wasn't the case. So, older and none the wiser, uh, we were fortunate enough to spend um, a bit of time travelling together with Jamie's, I think it was mentioned earlier, once Instagram famous Patch the Panda. 
um, before going to our respective universities. And it was here where Jamie met his, his beautiful bride and now wife, Megan. When I first met you at Jamie's um, 21st, and it was very, very clear to me from that moment on what a, what a wonderful person you are. I mean, you, you really are an absolute catch, and I think Jamie of all knows that. Um, you're, you're fun, you're super smart, and, and honestly, without you, the, the boy would still be a mess. So on behalf of Ollie and I, and I'm sure Jamie's parents, thank you. Um, but looking beyond the occasional clumsiness is a very special man. A man that exudes honesty, trust and kindness. Um, three of the most important traits that I, I, I think are, are, are possible in a man. Um, in our up in Leavers book, James' caption underneath his photo says this. Always be a first-rate version of yourself rather than a second-rate version of somebody else. Jim Jam, you're the absolute epitome of this statement, and I couldn't agree more. You're a great man, a great friend, and you're going to make a very great husband to Megan. There you go, the speeches! We had quite a lot of requests for the speeches, so we thought we'd throw them in there. Yeah, for vlogmas. Just the best bits. Yes, hope you enjoyed it. If you're new to the channel and that's the first time you've seen anything from our wedding day, then we do have lots of other videos. Yeah, quite a lot. So go and check them out. They're, um, they're on our channel. Yeah. Or we'll I think they're some, in a playlist. Some a wedding playlist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so hope you enjoy those and thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye!